In our last episode, we successfully escaped from Vault 101, leaving all of our friends, the only life we've ever known, behind. We emerged in the morning light to stand atop a scenic overlook, overlooking a burned and destroyed landscape. But we don't have time to take it all in. Our father, James, is out there somewhere, and we've got to find him. Heading down the hill from the entrance to Vault 101, we find a broken asphalt road running east. As we follow it, we pick up a brand new signal on our Pip-Boy, Galaxy News Radio. As we tune to it... People of the Capital Wasteland, it is I, Three Dow, your ruler. Hear me and obey. Oh, sorry. That's that other radio station. Three Dog? Capital Wasteland? Oh, that's right. We read in the Overseer's Terminal that the ruins of Washington, D.C. are now called by the locals the Capital Wasteland. And we read that the closest human settlement to Vault 101 was a town called Megaton. That's likely where James went. That's where we need to go. As we continue along the road, we pass through the ruins of a town called Springvale, but we don't have time to explore it. Just then, and it's time we have a talk. A satellite flies by? There are those amongst us who would shatter our hopes for peace, order, Sputnik? No? Who well, it looks a lot like Sputnik from the textbooks we read during science class growing up in Vault 101. This appears to be some sort of floating robot, and it's broadcasting an enclave radio signal. Hello again, America the Magnificent. This is President Eaton, and I was hoping we could talk. The enclave will restore every American school, reinstate every youth program, and offer counseling and financial assistance to any family in need. What the heck is an enclave? But then we see it. Right next to a red rocket coolant refilling station, we see a sign, Megaton, pointing off to the right. Following the road southeast up the hill, we find a second sign, Megaton to the right. We see a small dirt path heading southwest through the rocks, and following it, we arrive at the town of Megaton. Now, I explored Megaton in great detail in a video that I published recently that you can watch here. So we'll focus on finding James. Upon entry, the first person we're likely to meet is the sheriff, Lucas Sims. He warns us about causing trouble, and then we can ask him, Hey, Lucas, I'm looking for my father. He's a middle-aged guy. Maybe you've seen him. Nope. Sorry. I got enough fires to put out in this place that I don't have time to keep tabs on every visitor. I'd ask around town. If we ask around town, every resident points us to the same place. Oh, man, you're looking for your dad? That is so sweet. Did he run out on you when you were a kid or something? Our parents died when we were kids. My brother Leo, he's the oldest. He raised my brother Andy and me. It was hard on him, but we turned out okay. But God, you don't want to hear about that. I'm sorry, but I haven't seen your dad. He didn't eat at the Brass Lantern. I'd remember if he did. Are you fucking kidding me? Get out of my face. Many of the transient visitors end up at one of Megaton's seedier establishments. I suggest you speak to Colin Moriarty and continue your search there. Your father? I don't know. I don't know. Doesn't ring a bell. Sorry. Not in here, I haven't. Girl? Are you bothering me? Because I think we talked about what happens when you bother me. Sorry, man. I haven't seen any cats like that roll through here. A runaway dad, huh? I've seen plenty of them before but none with the big 101 on their back. Good luck finding him. Maybe the armored vault suit will help you out there, huh? Hmm. Could be the guy I saw at Moriarty's saloon not too long ago. I'd ask there. And if we accept Lucas's quest to deactivate the bomb in the middle of town, he corroborates. Well, come to think of it, I do remember a stranger coming through here. Had a look in his eye. You know the kind a man gets when he's got a purpose. Spend some time up in the saloon. Might want to check with Moriarty. Just watch yourself. That man's trouble. All signs point to Moriarty's saloon. Heading to the top level of Megaton, we can head inside. And as soon as we do, we overhear a conversation. Ah, come on, you piece of junk. Every day it's the same damn thing. I told you, Gob, it ain't the radio. The Enclave station comes in fine. It's Galaxy News. Their signal's been shit lately. Goddamn radio. 
Work. Come on, work. Stupid radio. Why won't you work? Wait. Just give it up, that... Bob. We're not Damn going to it. get anything. Those poor people are having radio trouble, but that's beside the point. Let's see if they know anything about James. Heading over towards the bathroom, we can talk to the prostitute Nova. What do you need? I'm looking for my father. Middle-aged guy. Maybe you've seen him. Yeah, I remember that man. I saw him talking to Moriarty. It's hard to forget handsome men like that. Look, if you can give me more information or point me in the right direction... Yeah, I'll help you. Then Moriarty kicks my sweet ass out the door. Sorry, kid. If you want to know more, Moriarty is the only one who's going to help you. Talk to Gob. He hates Moriarty more than I do. Maybe he'll tell you something, but I doubt it. Enough of the tough chick routine. Tell me more. Oh, you like it rough, huh? Well, that costs extra. Beat it, kid. Go look for daddy somewhere else. Well, she wasn't very helpful. I heard you talking with that ghoul as I came in. What were you saying about radio stations? Huh? Oh, you mean why was Gob banging on that radio? Well, out there in the wastes. There are two stations that broadcast. There's the Enclave station. I don't know who they are, but I think it might just be some pre-war broadcast on a loop or something. And there's Galaxy News Radio. It's run by a guy named Three Dog, somewhere down in D.C., but the signal went down a while ago. What's all this about Galaxy News Radio? You serious? Oh, you must have come from that vault, right. It's the only free radio station left in the wasteland. The guy who runs it, Three Dog, he's like the only person who seems to give a shit. He keeps talking about fighting the good fight or something. Better than the crap on the other station. Heading on over to the ghoul at the bar, we learn his name is Gob. Let's see if he'll be a little bit more helpful. Hey Gob, I'm looking for my father, middle-aged guy, maybe you've seen him. Oh yeah, I do remember a guy like that. Honestly, I usually keep my head down. I tend to get smacked around if I look customers in the eyes. But talk to Moriarty, he'll know more. He only opens up like this if we are kind to him when we first meet him. Once he does, we have a number of ways to get more information out of him. We can say, if you know anyone else that can help, I'd appreciate it. Moriarty's your best bet. I wish you luck. Now I have to get back to work or I'll be answering to him too. Look, if you know something, you better tell me. Look, smooth skin, I've told you all I dare. Moriarty doesn't like me chatting with the customers like this. If he even thought I was talking to you, he'd tan my hide. Let me get back to work now before he sees us. We can pass a strength check to say, Look, you rotting piece of crap. Tell me what you know, or it's splatter time. All right, I'll tell you. Please, just don't hurt me. Or we can pass a speech check to say, Gob, please, if you know anything about my father, you need to tell me. I was like you once. I wandered into town looking for an escape from this stupid joke of a body I'm trapped in. Now look at me. Very well. Moriarty keeps a computer terminal in the back. On it, he keeps all of the goings-on in Megaton. If you can get onto that terminal, I'll bet he has information on your dad. Now get away from me, smooth skin. If Moriarty even suspects I told you this, I'm a dead ghoul. What's all this about a Galaxy News radio I overheard when I entered the saloon? Mr. Moriarty says we can keep it on. It's a good radio station. I like hearing the DJ, Three Dog, and how he's helping to fight the good fight. If only I was a part of that, instead of being stuck in this dive. Thanks, Gob. Bye. So the secrets might be on Moriarty's terminal. The problem is Moriarty likes to sit at his terminal. However, if we wait around for the characters to move around the saloon, or if we wait until night when they all go to bed, we likely find an opportunity to sneak a peek into his terminal. If we have poor lock picking or hacking, we can pickpocket Colin Moriarty for his office and cabinet key. Once inside his office, we can use the key to unlock his cabinet where we find his password. We can then use the password to access his terminal. We went through this entire terminal in my video on Megaton, except for the note Moriarty made about a recent visitor named James from Vault 101. I'm not even going to attempt the Irish accent. So out of nowhere, James came back to Megaton. Since he stayed here before, he asked me where the hell he could get a lay of the land and find out what's going on in the world. I told him about Galaxy News Radio in the ruins of DC and that guy Three Dog. Then like that, he was gone again. 
I remember the first time he showed up almost 20 years ago. I never expected someone to actually want to or be able to get into a vault, but he must have had his reasons. He had his kid with him, some baby that wouldn't shut the heck up. Normally, I would have kicked someone like that out of my place, but he had a way with words. Then, like that, he ducks into Vault 101, and he's gone for almost 20 years. Nice guy, I guess, but never spends enough caps. So James went to the ruins of DC to find 3Dog and Galaxy News Radio, and we learn that we weren't born in Vault 101? Where exactly were we born? Why was James traveling alone with us as an infant? Where did he come from? And how did he get into Vault 101? This revelation makes some of the things we heard back inside Vault 101 make a bit more sense. Seems like only yesterday that your daddy came. Goodness, listen to me ramble. Is it true, Dad? Was everyone born in the vault? That's what the overseer says, isn't it? All right, just remember one thing. We need a doctor, not a dead man. Fail to meet my expectations and there will be repercussions. No, no, put that away. This one's on the house. And now, a toast. To James and his cheery chatter. May your future be bright, safe, and barring as hell. This is all the information we need to leave Megaton behind. But there are many ways to get this information, and I just showed you the easiest. I'm not about to ignore the others. If we can't steal a key, and we can't pick a lock, and we can't hack a terminal, there are more ways to get the information we need. And to do so, we have to talk with Moriarty himself. Colin Moriarty, at your service. Welcome to Moriarty's. My saloon, my home, my slice of heaven in this backwoods little burg. If you've got the caps, I've got your pleasure. Please sit down, make yourself comfortable. Your troubles are a thing of the past. What's all this I hear about Galaxy News Radio? Galaxy News Radio is some loudmouth radio station located in the ruins of DC. Three Dog, the king of that loony bin, keeps yapping about fighting some good fight or something. A bunch of crap. But I suppose if you wanted to know what was going on in the wasteland, that's the place to go. Me, I could care less. I'm looking for my father, a middle-aged guy. Maybe you've seen him. My God, it's you. The little baby girl, all grown up. Persistent little flower, ain't you? Then and now it would seem. It's been a long time, kid. Oh, your daddy passed through here all right. Here and gone. Got what he came for and then left. I I'm assuming you'll do the same, correct? Huh? My father and I were born in Vault 101. Is that what your father told you? That you were born in that hole? That he was born there as well? Oh, the lies we tell to those we love. Your father brought you to the vault right after you were born. To keep you safe, you see. I remember it well, you stayed in my saloon after all. That's right. Your father, his brotherhood of steel friend, and you, the suckling babe with nary a tit to suckle. Sorry about your mom, truly. Ah, but life goes on. Daddy lied. Life's full of little disappointments. And now you're all grown up and wondering where he's gone to. You're lying. That vault's been sealed for 200 years. <laughs> God in heaven, would you listen to yourself? Do you honestly believe that's true? The lies they've put into that head of yours. Your father brought you to the vault right after you were born. To keep you safe, you see. But... No matter. That big round door is open now, hasn't it? Daddy's gone, and you need to know why. Could be I know where and why. But my dad told me we were born in Vault 101. Ah, I see. You know, I heard about the brainwashing that goes on down there. From some other fella, escaped, oh, five years back. All hail the overseer. We're born in the vault, we die in the vault, and all that other assorted lunacy. Kid, you've got better programming than our own Deputy Weld. You'd best wise up quick. Wouldn't want anyone taking advantage of you, hmm? Wait, so someone else escaped five years ago? That seems pretty important to me to be a throwaway line buried in Moriarty's dialogue tree. Unless someone didn't escape, and it was actually the Overseer on one of his trips above ground. We already know that he leaves the vault frequently. That's why he has the tunnel after all. Tell me where he is, Moriarty, or I'll beat it out of you. <laughs> oh, oh, kid. Uh, I'll let that one go. Chalk it up to youthful arrogance. Listen carefully. I don't know what Shatter Sims told you, but this is my town. 
Sims, he's a facade. An illusion of order I allow to exist. I was slinging drinks and killing raiders here in Megaton when the good sheriff was just an idiot kid with cowboy fantasies. Raise a hand to me and you'll never leave this town alive. Now, as for your dad, a hundred caps and I sing. Look, I just want to find my dad. Do you know where he is? You seem like a nice kid, so I'm going to be straight with you. Your dad was here, and now he's not. And yes, I know where he went. But what you're asking me for is information, and information is a commodity. Let's say a hundred cops, and daddy's location is yours. Very reasonable. Let's cut to the chase. How much for you to tell me where my father is? You catch on quick, kid. That's the way of it out here, for sure. You want something, you take it. Or you pay in cold, hard caps. Say, a hundred. Seems a fair price to facilitate a family reunion, don't you think? No thanks. I'll find out on my own. <laughs> Will you? <laughs> well, good luck with that. So far as I know, I'm the only one your dad told where he was going. So, when you change your mind, come see me. I'm usually at the saloon. A hundred caps. Daddy wouldn't think twice if it were you out there. We can give in and say, all right, Moriarty, here's a hundred caps. Now, where's my father? Excellent. Your dad raised a smart kid. Really no substitute for the love of a father, now is there? Speaking of dear old dad, he went southeast into D.C. to the Galaxy News radio station. Uh, good luck now. Or we can pass a speech check to say, I was kidding. Dad talked about you all the time. Now, really, where is he? Did he? Well... Our time together was brief, but that is the way of it out here. When a bond is forged, little else matters, hmm? Well, he did come through here, but he left. I'm truly sorry, it, but maybe you can catch up to him. He headed southeast into the city. Said he needed information from those lonies at the station. You know, Galaxy News Radio. What there is of it. Or we can say, a hundred caps? Are you nuts? I don't have that kind of money. Guilty as charged. Tell you what, kid. I'm going to help you out, for old time's sake. If you don't have the caps to pay for the information, then maybe you could do a little favor for me. No way, Moriarty. No favors. Fine. Go find Daddy yourself, then. I'll be here when you change your mind. Can you tell me where my father is now? You got memory problems, kid? You ain't getting something for nothing. So pony up the 300 caps and then we'll talk. Whoa, 300? What the hell? You said it was 100 caps. I did say it was 100 caps. And, as I recall, you said no. So now, I'm saying it's 300 caps. What'll you say this time? I'm sorry, but we had a deal for 100 caps. Oh, no, no, no. I offered a deal for 100 caps. You declined. So now I'm offering a new deal for 300 caps. But why worry about trivialities when your father's safety could be at stake? This is ridiculous. Forget it. Didn't you say that last time, too? I have a feeling you'll be coming back again. But I don't have 300 caps. Well, that's a shame for you, isn't it? You don't have the caps, and I guess I don't have the information. Disappointment all around. Or we can pass a speech check to say, Okay, let's just take a step back. 100 caps was reasonable, wasn't it? Well, I suppose it was. All right, because I'm such a softy, I'll honor our original agreement. But if we don't have the caps, we can say, look, I need a way to get some caps or I'll never have the money to pay you. If you're looking for a handout, you can forget it. But if you're looking for work, there's a favor you could do for me. If you're successful, it'll provide the caps you need to pay me. So you want me to do your dirty work? Who said anything about dirty work? You need some caps and I'm giving you a way to get them. It's just business. All right, sure. Anything to get the information. Eager, eh? Good. I like that. It's nice to have a door in this shithole of a town for a change. This junky bitch named Silver borrowed quite a few caps from me. Claimed she could start funneling Jet and Psycho to me for a good price. Problem is, she scrammed with the loot and set herself up in Springvale so she can inject herself into a stupor. Get the caps she owes me and they're yours. Yours to pay me with, anyway. <laughs> what a charming guy. I'm beginning to understand why Lucas warned us about him. You know, this portion of the quest is completely skippable. Even if we know that Dad went to Galaxy News Radio, we can completely skip GNR if we know where he went to next. But you know what? We are thorough here on this channel, so we're going to tackle this from every angle. Moriarty said that a junkie named Silver was hanging out in the ruins of Springvale. 
We know exactly where this is. We had to pass through Springvale to get to Megaton. So retracing our steps, we arrive by the Red Rocket Coolant Station and we can begin our search. Starting on the southern side of the road, we can explore these ruins. In this first house, we find a cellar door, but it's locked and requires a key. This is frustrating. This cellar only appears if we have the Broken Steel DLC installed. It has nothing to do with silver or the quest we're on, even though we stumble upon this cellar right at the beginning of the game. We won't find the key to open this cellar door until much, much, much later. So knowing this, we know silver's not there and we can move on. We find a water tower behind the houses of Springvale. Inside we find a tap we can drink from, but the water is highly irradiated, giving us up to nine rads per second. So it's not wise. Heading back out, we can explore the other house on the southern side of the road. Here we find an empty footlocker and a refrigerator still filled with boxed goods. This house's mailbox is tipped over and inside we find some brass knuckles. Heading across the street to the northern side, we find a mailbox still standing, nothing inside. There's a mail drop box just down the street from here where we find three frag grenades, some jet and psycho. A good early game stash. Heading into the first house, we find an unlocked cabinet where we can pick up some bobby pins and whiskey. And peering in the mailbox, we find a copy of Pugilism Illustrated and a letter from vault Tech. Dear Safety Conscious Citizen, we are writing to inform you that your family was not selected for inclusion in your chosen vault Tech facility. Your deposit has been retained and your application added to a waiting list for your preferred vault. In the interest of your family's security in the event of a minor nuclear event, please consider relocating to one of these areas where vault Tech facilities are available without a waiting list. For a full list of vault Tech facilities with available accommodations in exciting locales such as Oklahoma and newly annexed Canada, contact your local vault Tech representative. vault Tech wishes you and your family the best of luck in the uncertain future. Best regards, vault Tech, Public Relations Department, Washington, D.C. So a place in Vault 101 was highly competitive. This poor person didn't get in even though they lived here. Which means that all of the friends and neighbors that we grew up with are the descendants of very fortunate people. In the rubble of this house, we find a very easy locked safe and inside a 32 caliber pistol, chems and caps. What's most interesting about this letter is that vault Tech recommended people relocate their lives to a location where vault Tech had vaults that were not so competitive, Oklahoma and Canada specifically. So we learned that vault Tech had vaults in Oklahoma and Canada. Will we ever be able to explore annexed Canada? And will we ever stumble upon these Canadian vault Tech vaults? There's a Nuka-Cola machine right next to the coolant station. We walk away with cola and caps. And passing a bus station, we can explore the next house. This one's mailbox is completely gone. There is a drop box outside, but it's empty. Inside this house, we find a very easy locked cabinet with even more bobby pins and booze. Man, these people really stocked up on bobby pins and booze before they died. There's a house with a fence and a still functioning door nearby, but we'll explore it in a minute. Crossing the street, we find another mailbox and inside, another letter from vault Tech. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Gomez, congratulations on your family's recent inclusion in the Vault 101 community. You will find outlined in your application materials a full review of rules and procedures related to preparing for shelter in a Vault Tech facility. But we will outline a few key points here. Vault Tech provides all clothing, bedding, and accommodations for residents. Personal belongings must be reviewed and approved of by an authorized Vault Tech Hermetics technician before such belongings can be delivered to your reserved quarters within the vault. In the event of an emergency entrance to the vault, no personal belongings will be permitted beyond the main door of the facility. All vault Tech residents must attend an orientation seminar. If you did not attend such a seminar as part of the application process, you must make an appointment with your vault Tech representative. In the event of a vault activation, whether actual or drill, vault Tech will sound a siren, audible in the immediate vicinity of the vault facility entrance, and residents will be contacted via holotape message at the phone number provided in their resident profile records. Please report promptly to Vault 101 to await admittance and processing upon such a notification. vault Tech looks forward to having you and your family as valued residents. Be sure to present this letter to your vault Tech representative to receive your special commemorative vault Boy bobblehead toy. Sincerely, vault Tech, Department of Public Relations, Washington, D.C. 
Wow, so much to unpack here. So first of all, this was addressed to Mr. and Mrs. Gomez. That means this house belonged to the ancestors of Officer Gomez and his family, whom we met in Vault 101. Remember, Officer Gomez attended our birthday party, and when he found us escaping the vault, he let us go because he liked us and our father so much. His son was Freddy Gomez, one of the tunnel snakes. Amada makes fun of a female lone wanderer if we say that we wanted a kiss from Freddy Gomez. We also learned from James's terminal that he was suffering from vault depressive syndrome, and he was the only one of our classmates who never finished the goat getting stuck on question 10. This was their ancestor's home. And with this note, we got an outline for what an emergency evacuation event would look like, which we then got to witness firsthand during the events of Fallout 4. And it went almost exactly like it was described here, residents living at houses close by, the siren going off, with the exception of the holotape message. The sole survivor never got a call when the bombs dropped, instead they were watching TV. And we get a clue as to why we find so many bobbleheads scattered around the wasteland. They likely not only belonged to vault tech executives, but also to everyday citizens who were enrolled in vaults. Once accepted, they could exchange their acceptance letter for a bobblehead toy. That may explain why we find them in offices, businesses, and even private homes. There were a few more ruins nearby, but nothing interesting in them. And the only other thing we find over here is the Springvale School. The Springvale School is haunting and horrible. And inside, we find evidence that raiders at one time tried to tunnel into Vault 101 and were at times at war with the people of Megaton. But I covered the entire story of the Springvale School in a dedicated video that you can watch here. There was one house in Springville that we missed, the one with the white picket fence and the still functional door. This is the small ranch, and as we head inside, we get approached by its occupant. Who the hell are you? Where'd you come from? Did Moriarty send you? I don't deal with junkies. Hand over all your caps, now. You're not getting a damn thing from me. You hear me? Not a damn thing! And with that, she attacks. But she only has a 32 caliber pistol, and she's easy to take down. Ugh. I'm hit! On her inventory, we find a bunch of psycho, so she really is a junkie, and 400 bottle caps. More than enough to cover whatever we owe Moriarty, either 100 or 300. Since she's dead, we can explore her house. We find three boxes of 32 caliber ammunition on the floor here, and we can loot her 32 caliber pistol. Strangely enough, we don't lose karma by killing her, but we do by stealing her possessions once she's dead. There are bobby pins in the cabinet, some more psycho on a countertop, and moving back towards the door, we find a couple of bookshelves with a first aid kit and some scrap metal we can use to hand in to Walter back at Megaton. The fridge has boxed goods inside and some Mirelert cakes, and we find some purified water next to some Dandy Boy apples in a crate. We can head out the way we came or go out the back door. Or instead of killing her, we can try to get the caps another way. Just hand over the caps and I'll be out of your way. Oh, him some caps? He's a liar. He just wants you to kill me. Those caps are mine, fair and square. Yes, Moriarty did send me, and he says that you owe him caps. That bastard. He's a... he's a liar. He just wants me dead. Those caps are all mine. I earned them. I don't care. I'm just here for the caps. Is there something wrong with your hearing? I just told you the caps are mine. You can't have them. You can talk all you want, but I'm not leaving without the caps. This is never going to end until I send him a message. Well, fine. If I have to kill you to send it, I will. And she again turns hostile, forcing us to kill her. Or we can hear her out. Slow down. Tell me your side of the story. Look, I used to work for that slob doing, you know, favors for guys. Well, I got sick and tired of it. I told Moriarty I'm taking my share of the caps and leaving. I even slept with the pig to seal the deal. Next morning he tells me I couldn't leave. So I bolted. I took my money and ran. Now he's branded me a thief and a junkie and sent his cronies to find me. I guess I need a new hiding place. I don't know. Maybe Moriarty's right and you're just a junkie. Look, I feel awful about what I used to have to do for a living, okay? I use the psycho to make the memories go away. Who the hell are you to judge me? 
Tell Moriarty he can take his fucking caps and shove them up his ass. Look, just give me some of your caps, and I'll tell him you're gone. You'd do that for me? I never expected anyone to care enough. Here you go. Thanks, kid. You're all right. With that, she gives us 300 caps, which is just enough to cover Moriarty's fee, if we said no initially. Or we can say, you know what? Keep your caps, and I'll tell Moriarty you're gone. You'd do that for me? I can't believe it. You hardly even know me. Thanks, kid. You watch yourself out there. In which case, we get rewarded by karma. But we have to come up with our own caps. Or we can pass a speech check to say, Look, just give me all of your caps, and in return, I'll tell Moriarty that you're gone. You'll never hear from him again. I'm tired of hiding out here like some kind of wasteland dog. I... I guess you're right. Here, this is all I have. Please leave me alone now. In which case, we get all of her caps, the full 400, but we lose out on the karma. However we chose to get these caps, when we have them in hand, we can return to Moriarty at his saloon. What's it to be? A few caps to find out where your father went? Or are you going to have a go of it on your own? Well, the wasteland can be such an unforgiving place. I took care of Silver for you. Good. I hope she got what she deserved. We get that option, and he has the same response, no matter how we chose to get rid of Silver, killing her or leaving her alive. All right, Moriarty, I did your stupid favor. Now, can you tell me where my father is? You took care of our little lost lamb, eh? I knew I could count on you. How about you just hand over a hundred caps and we'll call it even? Wait a second. I handled silver for you, and you still want me to pay? It's called economics, kid. You got something I want, and I got something you want. Nothing's free. I told you the favor would earn you some caps if you really took care of it. Now fork them over. Yeah, yeah. Here, take your hundred caps. I hope you choke on them. How can you be so rude when I'm going to provide you such a useful public service? Fine. Here's your hundred caps. Well, that wasn't so difficult, was it? Your dad came through here all right. Didn't stay long, though. Said he had some important business to attend to and headed off to the city. Something to do with Galaxy News Radio. Guess that'd be the place for you to start. Good hunting, and thanks for the caps. And with that, he marks the location of Galaxy News Radio on our map. Inspecting our map, we see that it's all the way across the Potomac. And in order to get there, it looks like we have to make a pit stop. The path stops at a dot right on the other side of the river. To get there, we take the road northeast out of Megaton and follow it east towards the Potomac. We see the Capitol Building and the Washington Monument arise off in the distance. Once we get towards the Super Duper Mart, which I covered when we went over the Wasteland Survival Guide, we turn left and cross a bridge to reach the opposite shore of the Potomac. Here we may have to kill some raiders. And once done, we discover the Farragut West Metro Station right next to a bunch of imposing sculptures. Heading inside, we travel down a slope until we find a door to the right. Here we find some containers to loot, and we discover the Metro Security Terminal, which is locked with a very easy lock. Once we hack it, we find three options. We can activate the Metro Protectron, we can turn on the Metro Escalators, Failure Call Maintenance for Service, or we can turn on Metro Lights, which also has a failure. The Protectron Charging Pod slides open, and the Protectron gets to work. Metro Security Protocol Initializing. Station Security Grid Offline. Metro Central Not Responding. Threat Level Omega. Lethal Force Authorized. He helps us kill a bunch of mole rats, which spawn right outside the door. But our path out here is blocked. But at the end, we see another door to the right. To continue, we head through it and follow the pathways to the northwest. As we travel down a staircase, we see graffiti on a wall to Galaxy News Radio Outpost and a strange symbol above it. Turning right, we go down some stairs until we arrive at the bottom of a large utility shaft. 
climbing the stairs to the top, we see a door to the left and a catwalk to the right. And on the other side of this gate are our very first feral ghouls. It's locked with an easy lock, but there's another way to get through here. Turning back around, we can open the blue door, and we find ourselves in a utility office. In the northeastern corner, we see a desk with an average locked box safe on the ground. If we have the skill to pick it, we find a stash of caps, a copy of Nikola, Tesla, and you, our first laser pistol and ammunition, and the DCTA, District of Columbia Transit Authority, Laser Firearms Protocol. Reading the protocol on our Pip-Boy, Congratulations on receiving your new DCTA standard issue laser pistol. Please take a few minutes to go over the guidelines posted in the DCTA employee handbook, section 28.1.1.B, and reprinted below for your convenience. Proper laser pistol usage. It should be noted that all DCTA property should be handled with the utmost care and used only when necessary. Maintaining personal safety during a communist attack is a good example of proper usage of your standard issue laser pistol. However, rodent population control is an inappropriate use and subject to disciplinary action as noted in section 11.3.5.C. Section 28.1.1.B.1, maintaining safe conditions with the laser pistol. Using this laser pistol in the DCTA metro facility can be beneficial in many ways, but the operator must observe his or her surroundings before deciding to fire. The subway utility pipes often serve as conduit to transport highly flammable gases. Interesting. Firing the laser pistol in the presence of a gas leak could cause an undesired explosion and or severe personal injury. Section 28.1.1.B.2, operating the laser pistol within proper specifications, it is required that all DCTA employees keep the laser pistol pulse energy, length, and repetition rate within the specifications diagrammed in the laser pistol user's manual. Failure to do so could result in severe reprimands from the DCTA regulatory committee as well as serious personal injury. So no modding the laser pistol, okay. The laser pistol we get is in poor condition. So much for taking care of DCTA property, right? But we get the pistol at the perfect time. On the desk, we find the MDCTA service access terminal. Inspecting it, gas and water reservoir exchange, 45612. Access menu, MDCTA system warning. Due to a class seven system failure, all service engineers are required to report for duty. Failure to report will result in termination per clause 45.7A of the maintenance service union contract. Have a pleasant work day. In the next one, begin gas main flow test. Leak detected. Auto shutoff engaged. So we just released gas into a room, but the automated leak detection software detected a leak and then shut the gas line off. So somewhere nearby, there's a big pocket of gas that we can ignite. And the final option is to unlock the security safe, which we already picked. So we started a gas leak and we have a laser pistol. The dots connect themselves. Next to the terminal, we find a first aid box within which we find the Metro Utility Gate Key. When ready, we open the blue door and we see our leak. Distortion on the other side of the gate. Firing our pistol. We ignite the gas and blow up some nearby generators. Creeping forward, we can use the key to unlock the gate. Oh, but we missed one. With the ghouls dead, we can loot their corpses. After looting the various containers lining the walls, we continue by opening a blue door to the north which is locked, but we can unlock it using the key we found in the first aid kit. Before heading through this door, we can take a staircase at the top of this shaft to the very bottom, where we find an average locked security door. If we can pick it, we find a secret stash. A frag grenade on the bottom of a shelf to the left, lots of cups, but the real stash is to the right. We find two ammunition boxes, one of which has railway spikes, a copy of US Army 30 handy flamethrower recipes, and four missiles. Here we also find an assault rifle, two 10 millimeter pistols, and a baseball bat. We also get three pre-war books, that's 300 caps from Scribe Yearling. When done, we can head up the stairs to the top of this shaft and finally go through the blue door. This takes us to a staircase, which rounds a bend, bringing us to the Tenley Friendship Station. 
and we arrive on the metro tracks. The path to the right is blocked, but turning left, we find more graffiti on the wall. GNR outpost to the right, and again with that strange symbol. After looting a Nuka Cola machine, we pass through to the red line. The northbound path is blocked, so we have to turn right to head southbound. Creeping along, a bunch of rad roaches scurry by, seemingly uninterested on us for some reason, and we learn why as we round a corner. Here we find our first super mutant. The rad roaches gang up on him, and then a bunch of ghouls come out to play. The mutant fights hard for quite some time, but is finally taken down. But you know what? At this level, I don't really want to tango with a super mutant. So creeping forward quietly, we can scale the escalator later to the top platform. At the top, we find the DCTA status monitor, which gives us a wonderful map of the entire DC metro system. Many of these places I've already covered in previous videos. To leave, we go straight through a tunnel and round a corner where we find more rad roaches that seem to take no notice of us. Then we open the gate at the end of this hallway to emerge above ground at the Chevy Chase North Station. Looking at our map, we see that we are almost there. GNR headquarters is just around the corner. Looks like we just need to turn left. But sadly, we are out of time. We'll discover exactly what's at GNR when we pick up right here where we leave off in my next episode. I publish many videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you feel like you're still not getting notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs you can't find anywhere else. My designs come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the next episode in the full story of Fallout 3.